Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carlos Phoenix with The Lounge Magazine, and today we will have a special guest. Um, but first, just to mention um, from our sponsor, The Art of Tees is sponsoring our show, and thanks to them, they do custom t-shirts, custom um, graphics, custom business cards, the whole nine yards. They also do the new specialized light-up tees, so they do customize those. Check them out, www.theartoftees.com. And, uh, like I said, uh, we have a special guest. Mr. Special Guest is Mr. Robotic. Hello. Hi. And Mr. Robotic is a music artist based in Chicago. Yeah. And he is currently in the process of releasing his album. And how, what is, how many albums have you released so far? Um, released two so far, and the third one just came out Monday. Excellent. Um, what's the name of this album? A oh, Boy in the Band of Love Story. Wow. And how many songs do you have in the album? Um, I have six and two bonus tracks. Cool. And now, how are you releasing this? How's, how's the public accessing this? Um, you can get it from iTunes or you can buy the physical copy. Cool. All right. Well, um, one of the things I like to ask is... Uh, you know, you're an up-and-coming artist. You're trying to penetrate the market. You're completely independent, to my understanding. And uh, one of the things I like to focus on or, or, or ask, because th this is a new change in the market, um, at mm -hmm. least within the past two to three years, where musicians uh, back in the day used to be like, all right, I, I got to get my name out there. I got to try and play at the clubs. I got to go out there and be as seen as possible in hopes that someone will stumble onto me and so much give me some attention and then hopefully sign me on a label but one thing i've noticed is in the past few years is that's changing that's shifting because the labels have been losing some kind of a a connection i believe from the market uh, whether it's because it's I don't know whether it has to do with technology or it has to do with um, they're not feeling the crowd anymore. Um, do, do you feel anything like that? Uh, most artists now are trying to just kind of do things on their own. What, what's your view on that? Um, I feel uh, now you have. Well, I tell a lot of people like people that ask me for advice. You have to be a uh, you have to be a brand. Um, so you have to do a lot of stuff yourself in order, you know, to get that situated. So when by the time a label do comes in, you know, all you pretty much have to do is just put money behind you to do what you were already doing. You need to prove that you can make money before they give you any money. It's just like a bank. You know, like they, a bank won't give you a loan until you prove you don't really need need the loan. Like you have to prove you can pay it back. And that's the same thing with a label. A label is like a bank. You know, uh, for me, I'm not necessarily an independent artist. I'm just an unsigned artist. It's, I, I feel it's a big difference. Okay. Uh, for the type of music I make, I make Top 40 Rhythmic, which is radio. So, I mean, I have deals on the table right now. I'm just keep doing what I'm doing, though, because at the end of the day, you you really just want to keep establishing yourself before you even sign, you know, to make sure you're a priority. So are you looking to be signed? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, now, what, what, is, what, are the, what are the attractions? Uh, what's attracting you to wanting to, wanting to be signed? Um, uh, labels holding on radio because I make radio type of music um, and they, they still have connections you know they still have the I mean, you can get on MTV yourself but I mean I feel like the, the, the machine still works you know like Lady Gaga wouldn't be where she's at without the machine 50 Cent wouldn't be where he's at without the machine it's still a machine you know that right. you know gets you to where you really want to go now I just um, are you familiar with Chuck D is yeah well, I just was watching um, a YouTube video, and mm -hmm. they're talking about uh, hip hop entrepreneurs, okay. and and they focused highly on the the internet and how that's changing the game and this and that. And they mentioned, and I don't remember the name of the artist, so forgive me, but they mentioned an artist that was able to sell thirty thousand copies of their album, mm -hmm. and those thirty thousand copies, um, based on I don't know fifteen to twenty dollars per album, blah blah blah. Simply put, they said that they made more money than they ever would have made with a label. Right. Is that attractive or... or? I, I'm, for the hip-hop artists, yeah, that's good. You know, but 
for the type of music I do and my goal, my goal set for what I'm want to do and what I'm going to do, you know, I personally need a label, you know, to do what I'm that trying to do, you know. Um, but yeah, for hip hop artists, because they have to, the hip hop artists, ninety percent of them they use sample music, you know. So I really don't feel a lot of hip hop artists. Sh- you know, they should want to go to independent route if they use nothing but samples, you know, because nine times out of 10, if you're a hip hop artist or artist in general, the label wants you to sign a 360 deal. And most of the hip hop artists, they make their money off touring, you know, so I wouldn't, if I was like the hip hop guy, I wouldn't um, sign to a label unless the deal was great, you know, because you got to pay for samples, you got to, uh, it's now they're taking the money out of your touring and all that stuff. And that's where majority of your income was coming from in the first place. But for me, on the other hand, type of artist I am, you know, like I have like my own merchandise and just branding wise, you know, for what I'm trying to do along with the music, it just works to be partner up with a label. Awesome. Now mm-hmm. I do, um, I've been listening to your music and, mm-hmm. um, Give me a little bit of your background. How did you get into music? I um, started when I was 16. I was a battle rapper. Um, and I ended up going to Columbia College, Chicago, um, downtown Chicago. And uh, like my goal initially, because I didn't think I would end up in college. You know, my grades sucked in high school. But luckily for me, <laughs> they didn't uh, care about GPA at Columbia. Um, and my goal there was just become like a super known rapper because it was like a lot of connections there at Columbia because everybody, every teacher there, they worked in their field. So, uh, and also just to be popular there, you know, so I battled literally every single rapper there and won. Um, and I started getting the buzz around campus and I was doing radio interviews. And um, I think I noticed I really didn't have songs, you know, to play on a, on, a, on these radio stations every time they asked me for uh, music or whatever. So, uh, and it's kind of hard to go transition from a battle rapper, you know, to a songwriter. So, like, li- literally, uh, I met a producer by the name of Slade when I was... Uh, like freshman year of uh, uh, of college or whatever, and um, you know we used to chill at his apartment. We used to meet him like a bunch of other guys at Slide and um, this guy named Jamel. You know they would always try to give me the right songs. The Slide would tell me, you know, focus on different cadences, ride different instruments in the beat or whatever. I just kept practicing, practicing, practicing. And I eventually went cold turkey from battle rapping, and I just stopped completely and just focused on um, songwriting. Uh, my first song was called uh, Shut It Down. Um, mm-hmm. That got me, like, my first shows when I was 18. You know, I was making 800 a show back then. You know, um, my first show was in Nebraska back then. And then um, I eventually got some shows in Wisconsin, Appleton, Wisconsin. And these are paid gigs, you know, all from uh, songs that were on MySpace. And I was like, that's eventually how I got my start. Wow. So now, uh, so you mentioned that you are performing. Yeah. Um, and how are you handling everything or do you have someone handling it for you? What kind of help um, are you getting? Initially, I was handling everything myself. I still kind of uh, handle everything myself now. But I have like publicists now, lawyers and all that good stuff too. But I pretty much handle the bulk of, you know, everything, you know, that's a part of my career. And, um, all right. So you said you went to school and you're, you, you mentioned a word that maybe I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not familiar with and forgive my night na- being naive. Um, you mentioned bat ra- bat rapping, battle rapping, battle, battle. Rapping. like oh, what Eminem oh, did oh, battle. Ra- oh, my bad. I'm just my ears. Uh, <laughs> I got these little headphones on and okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> my bad. Um, all right. Well, I'm familiar with that. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was misunderstanding that. Mm-hmm. So now kind of guide me through where it went from your battle rapping mm-hmm. and became, it started becoming performances. And like, where did you start kind of mentally organizing yourself to get to that next level? Um, at Columbia, they had this, uh, the big open mic on campus called Big Mouth. So I used to do it uh, like my freshman year. I used to have it every Thursday, uh, every third Thursday of the month. I used to just go there and, you know, everybody come out, see me. And then um, my sophomore year, um, you know, I started developing a super good fan base at the college and stuff like that. So people would come see me um, and I would just perform. And I just had these songs. I had a song called Shut It Down. Um, then the song called uh, Too Many Friends, which was like the biggest song on Columbia College campus ever. Uh, and I was super excited about that. So, you know, once that I started getting good at songs, you know, and just started performing, you know, I, like I said, I left the battle rapping alone, 
you know, it was, it was just a hustle for me for battle rap. And I was, people used to literally stop me on the train to try to battle me, like, outside the school. I'll make a quick $100 right there, you know. Hmm. But then once I started getting known a little bit more, you know, back then, when I was, like, 18, 19 years old, you know, doing shows, making more money, you know, I just quit battle rap in, in general and just start focusing more on being an artist and branding myself back then. Now, um, well, let me just check my volume here. Do I sound okay to you? Yeah. All right, just checking on that. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um, sometimes this happens when we're doing a live recording, but um, mm -hmm. here, let me switch to this. So, um, this is the style of music that you're doing similar, or has it changed a lot since you were originally doing the type of, of music you were doing? Um, the f initially, like two, three, four, two, three years ago, you know, I was doing, of course, hip hop stuff you know with the samples and stuff like that but to around 2007 2008 i switched it up to what you hear now like, i've been doing this sound for three years but it just keeps advancing honestly you know like i did earth girls you know three years ago oh, you, you know did. and it came out on jersey shore you know and it works you know so that that so. was my next question is um mm -hmm. my understanding is you were, you had done some songs that are now playing or have played in some tv shows yeah. So can you can you guide us through some of those? Um, my understanding is there's a new Kardashian one. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I should have some songs in there. I've been on um, Jersey Shore, uh, Greek, uh, taking the stage on MTV. Had the theme song to a TV show called Kiss and Tell on E. Um, been on ESPN Sports Center. Um, the movie Skyline. Been to Stump the Yard 2, The movie and soundtrack. Nice. You know, those just to name a few. Now that's that's pretty. To be honest with you, I think that's very impressive. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of artists, no matter how much they're pushing themselves, um, don't even know where to begin or how to even get into so much as a soundtrack to a film. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you want to be able to inform us of how someone who's talented, you know, because we don't want mm -hmm. everybody under the sun. Uh, you know, we talk about the Internet and, and I focus highly on how artists who are very talented can use the internet to their advantage to push themselves mm -hmm. market themselves but at the same time you have um there's there's people out there who think that they have talent it's kind of like watching uh um american idol and you hear all those bad artists also so right. um someone who is talented what, what can they do to reach those audiences or reach those companies that can get their music out there Either find somebody that knows them or just research. A lot of people don't research. People don't research the business. They just think it's all about music. For some example, like, and I hate when people say it's 90% business, 10% music. It's 50% business and 50% music. They need to equal out. You know, if you don't know the business or if you suck or not talented, as you say, it's just like it's not going to work. You know, like it just has to balance out. You need to know the business as much as you know the talent part. So you're saying you, you did your research, you were able to contact yeah. the people you needed to contact. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm visualizing, how do you approach them? Like, do you wait outside a restaurant, for example, say, yo, you listen to my tape? Or, you know, because <laughs> that, like, that was the old days. People, I mean, like, honestly, people don't do know that. how I do it. Honestly, like, I just know people or, you know, you can go through uh, music libraries, license that license music and do it that way. But I mean, I heard it's hard, you know, to get placements, you know, like, each music supervisor has like 60 to 70,000 songs on a hard drive. You know, they got to right. go through all that music. So, I mean, now, I don't know. <laughs> now, I mean, I, this um, conversation kind of mimics a little bit of what I used to do where um, I didn't know how to approach the market of, let's say, painting because I used to be a painter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's tons of book co uh, companies. There's a ton of um, music publishers who I want to do album covers for. And there is a, a fear of just approaching someone and saying, hey, look, you know, I'm an artist. Would you give me a chance? Right. Um, so I used to do little gimmicky things like um, I'd put my artwork on magnets and mm -hmm. say, look, you know, this is my business card. Whenever you want, just give me a call. And I'd, mm -hmm. I'd just walk away. You know, very simple, which is kind of like someone who would pass a CD or something. But the, mm -hmm. the painting is on the magnet. And I knew that if they would put the magnet, the place they're going to put it is on a file cabinet. Mm -hmm. And so anytime there was a time to look for an artist, it might be on that same file cabinet, and the first person they'd see is me. Right. And it lucked out. I lucked out because it, it would 
helped me so much in getting to work because mm -hmm. they wouldn't even bother opening it. They would just give me a call. Right. So, um, so it's kind of like that. Um, you, you really just got to be creative in how to approach them and come up with a really original idea or just a method to the madness where you kind of know how they think a little bit exactly. and try to cut exactly. them off at the pass. So, exactly. so, so that is that, was that your method? Yeah. Like the, the rules are, there are no rules. Like the, what, what works for me isn't going to work for somebody else. Right. You know, and that's the thing is like, no, like I have a certain plan because of the type of music I make and what I can do and what I know I'm capable of. That's not going to work for somebody else, you know, and that's, that's the thing. Well, um, I'm going to interrupt this conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to play something that you've done uh, so that okay. the audience isn't just like, okay, I know this, I see this guy. Let's hear some of that, that talent that you have. And uh, <laughs> um, now it's the song that's going to be played from your website, which is mrrobotic.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, can you introduce the song to us? What was it about? Uh, the single is called uh, Material Girl. It's the first single from um, the boy in the band, A Love Story, that just came out Monday, featuring my friend Jesse Potter, produced by Corey Bold. Um, the song's basically about a uh, type of chicks I like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's, let's hear what kind of girls you like. Yes, sir. whole thing because i want people to go out and buy it <laughs> oh that was really cool um I, I hear a lot of production in there um how are you covering the cost to that is there a method to that madness a uh, production or recording uh b both <laughs> um, i have like my own producers basically you know so we just work and and then another good thing about licensing is you know pretty much where the money is you know like a lot of producers aren't getting paid as much as they used to so luckily for me I figured out a way to get money doing music. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, and, okay, there is more. You mentioned the Kardashians. Have that Has that already happened? Oh, not yet. Not yet. I just did the licensing agreements yesterday. So I just got to wait on the date to hopefully tell me they uh, placed me in there. I should be good to go. Awesome. That That's, it's so great for, um, for me to, you know, I've interviewed a lot of artists and, um, you know, some of them get really fortunate. Uh, they get signed. Um, American Yard is one of the bands, uh, the, one of the mm -hmm. groups, and they got signed with Akon. And mm -hmm. um, and I, I do, I try to meet as many artists as I can, um, and try to make some time for them because I want, I want people to see that there is there's a fight and a struggle to show your talent out there to the world. Mm -hmm. um, and some people kind of give up too easily. Right. And and I want to I want to be able to say, look, you know, well, well, you tell me what you should be telling people. Like what what is your biggest recommendation to, to artists who are talented, who want to push uh, to get out there? If you really want it, you'll find some way to get it. Like, <laughs> I, like to be honest, like, you know, like if if somebody's hungry for like 
a steak or something, you'll figure out a way to get the steak. You know, like at the end of the day, like if somebody really wants something, they will find some way to get it. You know, if you want to marry a girl or if you like a girl or something like that and you really want her, you're going to go out your way to try to do what you got to do to get her. It's the same thing with the music business. Like if you really want this, you say you want it, it's nothing stopping you from getting it. There's no plan B. There's no plan C. It's just plan A. And you have to literally be able to want to die for it. You know, that's it. You know, it's just like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's so that's it really, you know, like I'm willing to sacrifice everything for this. And that's why I guess I'm quote unquote winning. I guess like I give up everything just to do this is nothing else. I don't see myself doing anything else. I know it's what I'm meant to do. You know, what's, what's your next strategy? What's your next play? Um, now, um, you know, just work this CD, more shows that hook up with uh, corporate brands. I'm already in talks with some people that can't talk about, but, you know, that's where it is. You know, like, you have to team up with brands. And now, and the good thing with partner up with brands, you don't have to recoup the money back. You know, they'll, you know, because they their whole thing is, when they team up with artists, is the emotional aspect of, you know, the artist towards the fan, and they want to deal with your fan base because, you know, that's basically what brands want. They want new consumers and stuff like that you know so they'll put money behind the campaign put money behind you and just build like a a, a, a great relationship with them you know and because they'll give you the amount of money that a label will give you as an advance but the difference is you don't have to pay it back okay now what are you using uh to market yourself uh tv and <laughs> film my website and literally music, honestly, like the music is the number one thing that markets me because you can't see my face on the TV, but you can hear the song. Mm -hmm. And then that trickles down, you know, you want to find me after you hear the song on the TV, like my name appears on the screen. You want to Google the song and you'll find me. So that's pretty much how I do everything. <laughs> that's smart. Um, <laughs> and uh, so you're, you're on Facebook. Is that a big fo uh, push for you for you to get fans yeah, on Facebook? Yeah, they have 600 million people there. That's where I want to be. All right. And um, what's your Facebook name? Uh, Facebook.com slash Robotic World. Robotic World? Yeah. All right, cool. And uh, do you Twitter? Yeah, uh, Twitter.com slash Go Robotic. Nice. And, okay, so, so you have this album out. Um, you have... Um, these great licensing deals, which is fantastic. I haven't heard that before from other artists that I've interviewed. Um, mm -hmm. How long did it take you to kind of figure this this puzzle out? Um, basically, uh, well, licensing. Um, I had got my first placement, I think, last year in November, and you know, I just started research. I really didn't know what it was at first, because mm -hmm. at first, I think I heard like my friends, the cool kids, in the episode of Entourage, and I, I didn't know you got paid for that. You know, I just saw like, oh crap, I'm on a song in the TV show. That's cool. You know, so and I started, I got my first placement. They told me it's money in it, you know, and then I researched how much money is in. I was like, wow. And did crazy. you know these guys? Huh? Did you know the cool kids that you mentioned? Oh, yeah. We went to the same school. Nice. Yeah, well, see, see, that's were... awesome. I mean, when you have friends yeah. that kind of figure a little piece of the puzzle out and then you start kind of putting other pieces mm -hmm. together and make it happen. Yeah, um, now, uh, now you're, you're a good looking guy. Have you thought about <laughs> have you thought about being in films or TV shows? And the reason to bring um, that up is um, you know, look at someone like Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. you now he's got a, a crazy story, uh, starting off from YouTube. You know, right. he's been a kid, you know, playing drums and whatever, and growing up into this, and now he's got a feature film out. Mm -hmm. He's in NCS, uh, NCIS, and other TV yeah. shows, um, showing up on Saturday Night Live. Uh, is is that a similar career path you'd like to follow? Exactly, but I want I want to start off like now. I want to start off just performing on the TV episodes, you know, because that hasn't really been done by a rapper yet, like an unsigned rapper. Like that's what I'm trying to do all this stuff before I get this deal. That's you know, interesting. I just want to do, now, now to is there areas. are there are there people knocking on the door right now? Yeah, like I've already had like two or three uh, TV shows say like, they're really considering me performing. Well, on I, TV. what I mean is um, offers from labels. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course, but. I'm trying to do these next couple of things first, and then you know I'll take the deal. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. That first, I mean, you know, get more the good money. thing is there's a there's there's a feature that you see already, and it's just right. within reach. Um, now I'm guessing because licensing is complicated. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you have a good lawyer for yourself. Yeah. Okay, so you're not handling that stuff yourself. 
Um, some stuff I can't handle, like when I just have to sign agreements, but like stuff for like film or stuff like my lawyer, I have a something yard too, like the contract, you know, he actually, he actually put, put my name in the credits, you know, for the movie, like stuff like that. He'll handle that stuff. Got it. And, and how about family? Um, do you have family? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're married? Oh, no, no, I'm not married. I'm only 23. Oh, wow. You're a young kid. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm an oldie. Um, and how how how's that support? Um, my mom, she supports me. You know, it helps. Uh, a lot of family they'll buy like they'll buy like the Stump the Yard two soundtrack when it was in stores. You know, they'll watch TV episodes when they hear me in them. They buy my shirts and all that good stuff. So it's exciting. That's cool. So now yeah, it took a while for them to get there though. Now was it a rough beginning with the, was it was it a rough beginning with the family? In other words, I mean, once in a blue moon, I'll hear like. Hey, stop being a dreamer, this and that, that kind of family. You know what I'm saying? It used to be like that. See, but, yeah, that's what I thought. Because it was, it was like that for me. me. My drive is like, I can't even explain. Like, when I want something, I'm going to get, I don't care who you are. You could be my family, whatever. Like, I know what I want. You know, my mom knows that about me. Like, if I really want it, I'm going to get it. And luckily for me i have to shut them up it was just to show them i can make money doing this and keep in mind like i said when i was 18 i got my first show for 800 dollars and for 15 minutes you know so it's kind of hard right. to perform for 15 minutes to get 800 dollars and say hey i want to go work in nine to five you know that that was my mind state you know it's, it's hard to do it it's hard to transition now, so I was now, like, that's Man, you, I have, to now have you had to do that right it's like it's I couldn't do it nine to five because it's like I just made eight hundred dollars in fifteen minutes compared to making four hundred dollars in two weeks. You know, I hear you. it's it's hard to transition. So I was like, okay, I have to find some way to make this consistent. You know, make this a consistent income. You know, so I could just have, shut my family up so they'll be like, you know, don't dream or whatever. Shut them up and continue to do what I want to do. That's sweet. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything else you want? to focus on or, or point ping, um, bring out to the attention of the public? Um, I think we nailed a lot of stuff already. Um, anything else you want to know? Well, how, how's the interviews been? I know you've been uh, interviewing, uh, you, you were in the interview at the University of Chicago yesterday. Chicago yesterday. Um, what kind of stuff are these interviewers asking you? Um, they asked me a lot of stuff about uh, the business and how I'm like breaking music in a different way. Um, it just like my whole career path, like what I'm trying to accomplish and all that good stuff. So that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, now you're in Chicago, um, but you seem to be touring a lot of different states. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you have a fan base first in those states? Is that how you get to those states, or how does that work? Um, a lot of times I either know somebody there or a promoter just hits me up, you know, and asks me to come perform. Um, that's pretty much it, really, you know, in, in those type of situations. That's cool. Um, hmm. Okay, um, there's probably some girls watching. Got a girlfriend? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now what's your attitude on that? Is it um, not right it's now, hard. focused? I, see, the, the hard part is if, you, if they're not in the industry, they don't really, They don't know, understand they, it. They don't get it. It's tough, you know, like has let somebody go like a couple of weeks ago. Like it gets, they don't trust you, you know, then they put you in a box, you know, cause luckily I'm not a rapper. Well, I am a rapper, but you know, they put you in a rapper box. Oh, you got groupies and you were doing this and doing that. So they don't trust you automatically. So it gets tough. Um, the, it, I find this interesting cause again, to kind of go do some similarities, um, as a, as a painter that I was, um, mm -hmm. all my models are nude. Mm -hmm. So I use nude models. They're gorgeous girls. And of course, you got to pay them. Right. Um, but if you are dating somebody and you tell them, yeah, I'm going to do a job tomorrow. I got to get this nude model. Mm -hmm. It was just a panic attack. Right. And I'm like, look, they're going to be there for like 30 minutes and I pay them and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so the, it was always difficult for them to kind of get it and understand it. So I can only imagine for you, especially if you're doing tours and and the reputation of music in general as a whole from rock and roll to hip hop yeah um i can imagine how difficult that must be it's tough so. uh, now now okay um let's step back and look at the industry as a whole mm -hmm. um my experience with some of the industry is uh, if i'm sitting in a recording studio 
there's always that guy that's got to pull out the weed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you find that kind of atmosphere often? Not in my session. Either I go by myself, you know, a lot of times, or, you know, because I'm I don't need weed. I mean, I drink at a club, but I'm not. I don't need weed or anything to to make a record. You know. Now I don't mean to put you in a position of like, do you have to admit to something? So, but mm -hmm. but I just know that that's that that's been on occasion part of the environment and uh, mm -hmm. and um, well, anyway. So I mean. That's cool. Yeah, drinking in the club, that's, that's <laughs> common. Um, and the kind of... Um, when you're going at the clubs, mm -hmm. um, does it get crazy? Or, or do you usually just have a really good set and, and you just kind of get to pack your things and go to the hotel and just chill out? Or Basically, yeah, you know, like I chill or party or, you know, perform. And have fun, you know, like my crowd are just fun, you know, like it's never no drama there, you know. At the end of the day, my name's Mr. Robotic, <laughs> you know, it's just like it's probably not gonna be any drama around something called Mr. Robotic, you know. I hear you. you know? <laughs> All right, now if you don't mind, I'd like to play the second song that's on your website. Okay. And I'll you know, I'll play a small piece just to kinda so if you want to introduce that song for us. Um this song is called Hit the Dance Floor. It was on um Greek on ABC Families on MTV's Taking the Stage, a show on the CW called The Beautiful Life. Um, it's the number six song on the uh, project, and it's called Hit the Dance Floor. Dang, this guy's going places. All right, <laughs> let's do this. All right, hold on. I'm gonna take a little bit just to do it. Do it like this. <laughs> I've been watching you all night. All night. You've been sitting there and Baby, why don't we hit the dance floor, baby? Hit the dance floor, yeah. baby. Hit the dance floor tonight. Yeah. tonight. These kids can't lame, they ain't got no game, so you know they wanna brawl my swag. Yeah. Know what I mean? Fabulous and dream. Anything you need, just throw it in the bag. Ooh. Got it like that, ain't gotta fight back. I know you're hard cold without a nice pack, but I can fight that. Of course they hate. The way I feel you are like an every gas ain't ballet. Yeah. Head to the club for the parking, gotta see some. Remind you of Charmin. See you at the bar with a drink. So that's sweet. I like that. It's a good awesome. sound. Um, you know, I almost wish you were in the Atlanta area because uh, what I'd like to do is set up a live performance. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of those things that I've been trying to set up for this show is to get some of the artists that we talk to and uh, and try to do a live performance. But, you know, in due time, soon you'll be having big concerts at Madison Square Garden and stuff. Ooh, and can't uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, listen, I, I wish you much success. Thank um, you. And, uh, you know, I love the attitude. I love the, um, the, the approach that you have. I love that you're figuring it out all for yourself. It, you're creating your world basically. Thank and, you. um, and you don't find that often once in a blue moon, you know, you, this is some original thing process, thought process, but you're doing a great job. Your site is beautiful. So oh, thank you so much. I, I give, thank you uh, so much. I really commend your, your, your web designer, um, mm -hmm. whoever he or she may be or they, Tom, what up? <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's it. I mean, um, just, it's really good to hear, uh, good stories and, uh, and positive thinking. And it's not one of those type the, type, the style of music is not that of great negativity. Uh, right. and I think it's very appealing to a larger audience than just your, your average or typical, um, hip hop or pop music and that type of stuff. I think mm -hmm. it has a broad appeal. So again, uh, much luck to you. Thank um, you so much. And um, I hope we can set up another interview again when you start getting closer to those deals. And of if course, you want to, if you ever want to just talk about um, how the in industry is treating you or um, you want to just promote something that you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, the door is always open for you here at the Lounge thank Magazine. Thank you so much. So um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Again, I'm going to briefly mention that um, this episode, and let me just switch over here to a different format here. Um, this episode has been sponsored by 
theartofteas.com. Theartofteas.com is a website that allows you to design your own t-shirts and customized merchandising. So if you're an artist as well, you can create your own merchandise. They do specialty inks, fashion stuff, studs, rhinestones, all sorts of stuff. So check them out, www.theartofteas.com. And that's going to end our episode. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Robotic. And no you, can, you can check him out at mrrobotic.com. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching.